Sorry. Uh, yes, sir, you do. That at the beginning of 2021. Those fantasies say that the economy was on its flat on its back during the. Uh... I thank the gentlelady and now I yield five minutes to my friend from Texas, Dr. Michael Burgess. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, I do want to associate myself with the chairman's remarks early on about the, uh, the linkage between the vast increase in federal spending and the occurrence of inflation, which then subsequently impacted the inflation rate that has now come back to visit us in the form of higher interest rates, higher interest rates on the national debt, to the point that interest on the national debt for the first time in history will eclipse spending on national defense. I think it's a very important point that people should not overlook. I mean, this was, this was an intentional act that caused this. The other thing that I feel obligated to point out is that the people who were supposed to be watching this sort of stuff, that is the president of the, of the Fed, that is the secretary of the treasury, absolutely missed inflation when it was occurring in, in all, by almost a year. And had they reacted sooner with some interest rate increases, it would not have been necessary to drive the interest rates up through the roof the way they did. And subsequently now we're left with the, uh, with the situation that we're in. Now, you told me, I think it was May of 2001, when we first had an opportunity to meet, that <clears throat> you did not appreciate how strong the economy was going into and coming out of the coronavirus pandemic, that the economy was actually really hitting on all cylinders, and it continued to do that even in spite of, of some of the arbitrary shutdowns that occurred during coronavirus. Do I remember that correctly? Uh, you do. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yes, sir, you do. That at the beginning of 2021, as the vaccination program proceeded and, and um, you know, job creation was accelerating, the economy was reopening, I did not appreciate how strong demand was. And then I didn't, I didn't appreciate at the time, since this, how strong the supply disruptions were that uh, that remained, and that's just what the chairman was pointing at as well in his opening. Well, I do, I do think that's something we do need to bear in mind. Um, <clears throat> the people who indulge themselves in revisionist fantasies say that the economy was on its flat on its back during the uh, mm -hmm. the latter part of the Trump administration, but in fact that is not true. It was a strong economy, and it emerged from coronavirus strong because it went into it strong. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I, I just have to ask you about, um, the ranking member brought up that the cost of Medicare for a 10-year window has reduced um, greater than expected. And of course, he attributes it to the Affordable Care Act. What is that time window that we're talking about? From when to when did that is that is that period of time where Medicare spending has has been lower than what you expected? Okay, yeah. So it's it's since 2010 we have had a lower growth rate of Medicare than the CBO had expected, and in our projections now we have Medicare growth a bit higher than than that, but still lower than it was in the the preceding decade. Before well, just as a as an observation. Of course, the Affordable Care Act was passed in 2010, but the implementation was several years subsequent to that. Um, one of the things that happened prior to 2010 was Part D benefits that uh, allowed seniors to have access to lower cost generic medications like statins, like uh, ACE inhibitors that lower blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And the effect that these medicines had over that longer period of time, I would submit is probably a greater effect than the Affordable Care Act because we all remember one of the uh, criticisms of the Affordable Care Act was that it was 10 years of taxes for six years of benefits. And indeed, the, the benefits, of, if such as they were, the Affordable Care Act did not kick in until later in that, that time window that you're describing. Uh, let me ask you this, overall, is the Affordable Care Act Increased or decreased the cost of healthcare in this country? Uh, over, as an overall, oh boy. Um, you know, I apologize. I don't have a single answer for that. There's so many impacts and so much has changed that um, uh, I was going to say, and, and among the other impacts, or one that you highlighted is improvements in cardiac care, which reduced the um, you know, growth of healthcare spending overall. 
maybe some of that was from the uh, aspects of the Affordable Care Act, the uh, ACOs, the uh, accountable care organizations, but we, we know the cardiac care improvements mattered. We're not sure exactly what it was that, that led those to take. Uh, Correct. Was it the availability of medicines at a lower cost, which is Part D, mm -hmm. or the, develop, uh, the evolution of ACOs, which, again, I don't think they've paid off on the promise that was suggested to us when uh, um, yeah. the chairman of CMS told us what, uh, what he was doing with that. Look, there's never enough time. I've got a ton more questions, and I'm going to submit those in writing. I appreciate also you working on the, the concept of what has the Affordable Care Act cost us mm -hmm. over the time. I mean, you've had, it's been over 10 years since its implementation. You had 10-year projections. Go back and look at what you projected and what actually happened. I think that would be an interesting case study in economics if nothing else. So thank you very much for being thank, here, and I'll yield back. I, I thank the gentleman from Texas, and now you shutdowns that occurred during coronavirus. Do I remember that correctly? Uh, you do. National debt to the point that interest on the national debt for the first time in history will eclipse with some interest rate increases. It would not have been necessary. Sorry. Uh, yes, sir, you do. That at the beginning of 2021. Those fantasies say that the economy was on its flat on its back during the uh, 